dull, grey tarmac. The Saturday nightmare. They plant a few trees, and the marketers try their best with the shop facades, but still that boring utility of necessity. The cars, too. A couple of Citroen C3s here, some other whatever's there, just drivel. All of it. But there are exceptions. Focus Mark 1 is a remarkable car, special even. Try to ignore the retail park setting and look closely, and you may even realise that yourself. Okay, you're not convinced, but before you go onto YouTube's recommended McLaren 720LT video, hang around and see why the supermarket trolley can actually be a car enthusiast skateboard. the ingredients, hydraulic steering, twin cam, naturally aspirated engine, there's no turbo to dull the sensors, this one's the 1.8, fully independent suspension all round and a critical lack of weight, only 1100 kilos, this one's the gear, and as you might expect, that means it's got air conditioning, heated front screen, um, even a partially powered driver's seat. Really you do wonder if you really need any more um, from a car in terms of equipment. Small touches like the Alcantara effect seats, a reasonable attempt at chrome on the outside and on the door sills, uplift the interior space enough even for you to tolerate the triangular wooden centerpiece. Truly, it's an environment of form, function and added niceties. There's our leather steering wheel for the driver, leather gear shift, and importantly, well, swift function of a traction control button. Switch speed bumps for rolling hills, concrete for a rustling grass verge, grey for green, and that's where the focus really begins to shine. Drop a cog and those dials dance into action and uncover a seriously good drive. Purposeful urge between uh, four and six thousand, a bit like a, an athlete with the finish line in sight. Makes some good sound too, with a bark and a a lovely resonance and all that lovely twin cam goodness. And great gearing too. In fact, better than many of the newer cars I've driven with six speeds. It allows you to make the most of that 128 foot bound of torque and allow you to get as close to the 115 horsepower at a rather high 5750 RPM. Small numbers, yeah, but consider the weight. And before you defect to the ST, that weight difference is 200 kilos. That's a focus to Fiesta difference these days. And it makes all that difference. And you feel that lack of weight the moment you in an apex and that's, that's also where you feel the real talent and breadth of ability of this chassis all that suppleness and ride is still there but there's a a poise a neutrality a, a controllability in the chassis that and a sharpness that you just don't expect where the genius lies is in Ford's much touted control blade rear suspension. It's a bit like uh, the multi-link affairs of Volvo's 850 and BMW's Z axle in the early 90s. But what Ford did was make it into a space-saving, cost-effective format. And so they're able to put it 
in a budget hatchback. And indeed, it gave the Peugeot 306 a lot to worry about. And particularly on this car's 185 mil tires, that means that there are layers of grip or not <laughs> to toy with. Linear, uncorrupted steering and throttle inputs are the ones that dominate the pervasive feeling of a clean chassis and drivetrain. It's by no means flawless, the so gear stick doesn't centre itself, which forces an odd technique. ABS can be a bit premature, but on UK roads, that slight lack of damping usually imposes a speed limit before that becomes an acute issue. Two negatives make a plus. True to Ford history, it's still a bit rough around the edges. But isn't that beyond the point where it matters, the Focus delivers a satisfyingly rich driving experience. And even on ZTEC models, you can get a stiffer suspension. In fact, it was optional across the range. So there's your damping problem sorted. And on earlier models, the uh, ABS was optional. So it can't intervene early if it wasn't there in the first place. Altogether, you can deploy great big chunks of its performance on the road. And it remains consummately tidy and consistent. And that's what makes it a fantastic driver's tool. And as you flow from corner to corner, blowing the grass and leaves away in passing, warm air and four pop fizz swirling about the cabin, you'll perhaps realize that not all shopping trolleys are the same. Even turn it down to a breeze, a waft, something more conducive with the gear badging, and the harmony of drive remains. You don't always have to drive like your hair is on fire to enjoy the car. Your picnic might appreciate it too. Here's a car that fits in with much more sophisticated company. It serves multiple purposes expertly, and especially in this gear trim, it suits your picnic very well too. At the same time though, it balances that fiery mood on a Sunday morning. Few clouds of worry are likely to hang over you either as owning one of Ford's best is a cheerfully cheap prospect. Trips to German and Swedish, the supplies are available of course, needn't inspire a sinking heart. Your driving fun needn't be spoilt by on-the-move maintenance maths. You can afford the tyres, you can afford the brakes. It's essentials money buying you extra special motoring. <coughs> yeah. Well, we said rough edges, didn't we? Four-wheel discs too. That's over and above the up GTI. And do linger on that comparison actually. Cue the arguments in the com comment section. Beyond arbitrary statistics and spec sheets though, this car has what separates the best driver's cars. It feels wieldy, it's cohesive. It just feels right. Once you're looking closely enough to recognise that, you also spot that the Focus is actually a rather distinctive looking thing too. Wearing its theme of triangles, proud and uncorrupted, including modern bits like integrated bumpers, large lights, 
flared wheel arches. It has a completeness about it, and you can see the influence it carried over to its segment since. It truly is a landmark car. A win for the engineers. Overturned blandness. And this car is from an era where it blends that modern and old. And in fact, actually, at this time, maybe it's more relevant than it ever has been. That drive is just the organic butter on the Taste the Difference cake. But before the market men get too excited over the idea of product augmentation and whatever else they can think of, be distracted by my channel and subscribe and get involved in the comments. And if you're really keen, even read the written article on the website. And in the meantime, do all of that until there's more Esquire Grande comment content coming real soon.